Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 So as we uh, compete with the cicadas, we'll remember that uh, all the small creatures were also made by God. <laughs> and they are here with us this morning. So my heart breaks for those people who turned back. Imagine what that must have been like for them after following Jesus, after seeing all of his miracles, after the feedings, after all they had received from him, and the community that they must have found together to turn back must have been heartbreaking. It must have been so hard for them to leave that sense of life and spirit and go back to where they uh, had been before. Feeling dejected, feeling that they had been fooled or wrong, all kinds of emotions that I'm sure were very difficult for them. But why would we think that they would turn back? It's sometimes you wonder, what would make you turn back? Why, why did they go back? Maybe Jesus was moving too slow for them. Maybe he was moving too fast for them. Maybe it was more control that they wanted. Maybe they were uncomfortable with Jesus talking about spirit and life rather than rules and things that we could check off the box and feel very comfortable that we have done and so had assured our salvation. Maybe he was making it the bar too high for them in order to follow him and so they turned back and in my mind they chose religion over God. That religion was a much safer place to be some place where they knew exactly what they could follow and what they had to do, rather than someone who was talking about spirit and life, about following him, and maybe it felt a little uncomfortable. But those 12 disciples, I think, become a community here because they stay. Where else would we go? What else can we do? We're here with you, we're following you, and they stay with Jesus, and in that act of commitment, in that moment when they say, no, we're here, we're with you, there's nowhere else for us to go, they become that, those disciples, those followers of Jesus, and a real community. And there are those moments in our life, aren't there, where you say, this is where I stand, this is where I am. There's nowhere else I want to be. Those of you who have uh, accept, made or accepted a proposal of marriage know that moment where you decide, is this going to be your life? Is this going to be your fate? Is this where I am? Most of us had the decision to become Christians made for us when we were baptized as infants. But there was also a moment when we decided in our lives that this was the life we were choosing for ourselves, that we would come as an adult and be part of a community of disciples, say, yes, I am choosing life in a community of followers of Jesus, and that is where I will live out my ministry, my vocation. Where else would I go? There was years in my life where I was going to programs at Unitarian Church and all kinds of different things that were very interesting, but there was something missing and it was Jesus. Mm. Why would I go anywhere else? When this is where life is for us, when the life that Jesus hands us in the bread, in the wine, in his flesh and blood, in living water and baptism, is true life. Why would I go anywhere else than here at the table with a community of fellow disciples following Jesus into true life? Life that is full of water, full of spirit, full of ups and downs, we know the story of the disciples. It didn't go 100% perfect from this moment on, <laughs> right? Look at Peter. Peter denied Jesus. Judas betrayed Jesus. There were very few people with him when he died. 
it didn't mean that everything was going to be perfect, but it meant that they came back, that they continued to return and return to each other and to Jesus in a way that helped them to lead a meaningful life, a way that dedicated their lives to Jesus. You know, Christians get sick. We lose loved ones. We lose our jobs. We get divorced. We grieve. All of the things of human life happen to us also. It's not a guarantee of immortality or of perfection. What it is is a guarantee that through coming to the table, through receiving the body and blood of Christ, you will abide in him. And that word abide, how does that feel? That feels like home to me. You know, home can be dicey sometimes, can have its ups and downs, but home to us speaks of a place of, of safety, a place that can be quiet if we get up at 5 a.m., maybe. <laughs> a place that we can experience people who know us and hopefully love us anyway. And abiding in Jesus, even through the ups and downs of our lives, of living our human lives, abiding in Jesus can provide us with that sense of home, even when we're away at school, even if we're in prison, even if we're in the hospital, even if we have traveled so far, we don't remember where that home is. In that abiding in Jesus, we feel home. We feel safety. We feel a sense of being fed for our journeys. How many of you have read the or seen the movie The Life of Pi? It's really wonderful. It's the story of a young boy uh, who's on a journey with his family, and they're taking all of the animals from the zoo with us. They're on a boat, and the boat gets shipwrecked. And this young boy, who's maybe 14, 13, 16, he ends up the only survivor on a lifeboat with some of the animals, which is the good news. The bad news is one of the animals is the tiger from the zoo. So the story goes through his surviving this shipwreck, spoiler alert, and the lion, the tiger, Richard Parker, surviving. And at the end, he's an older man, an uh, adult man, and he's telling the story to someone. And finally, the person says to him, was there really a tiger with you? Is, is that tiger real? <laughs> And the, and the man says, Pi says, it's a better story with the tiger in it. <laughs> <laughs> it's up to you whether you believe there really was a tiger or not. You can read it many ways. I believe that life is better with Jesus in it. That our lives are immeasurably better when we come together to receive the body and blood of Christ, when we come together to affirm our belief in the Holy Spirit and that life-giving force that is in the world and is there for each of us. It's a better story with Jesus in it. Where else would we go? Amen. Amen.